welcome aboard Liberty. <laughs> With a V. We've been living on it for two months and now that we are all settling, I think it's the perfect time to show you around, especially since we made some great upgrades. Last June in Sardinia, Italy, we rented a camper van for 10 days. It was the first time that we'd ever done anything like this. Um, we mainly don't for Alethea, it's something that she always wanted to do. Um, I wasn't too enthusiastic about the idea of living in a van to start with. Um, but within days of starting it, we, we just absolutely loved it. The, the freedom and the simplicity and, and the ability just to park up anywhere in nature and enjoy it for as long as we wanted. It was just fantastic. Back in London, our life was a constant rush. Uh, we would work really long hours and I felt I was losing purpose at work. Despite what it might appear to some the perfect life, we, we both felt uh, something was missing. So van life was like a revelation, was what we needed for a more meaningful lifestyle. Back in March, we bought this van, a Ford Transit Echelon wheelbase. It's L4H3 and it's a, it's a hybrid, mild hybrid. Yeah, it's about six, seven meters long and 2.7 meters tall, isn't it? Yeah, um, and it's, it's only done 13,000 miles, so it's practically new and we've got a really good deal on it. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you our three what our three deal breakers were. The first thing, we didn't want to shuffle things around for basic needs like the bathroom. The second, we wanted to go all electric, so not relying on gas or anything else, which meant that we needed a really strong and powerful system. And we are really happy how it turned out. You probably haven't seen as much power in a van like this, guys. And the third thing is that we wanted the space to look open. We want an open layout so we both have our own space. Let's start with uh, this first step. We use um, some leftover carpet that we had from a previous project for here, for the floor in the cabin and the back storage. And um, here we have a little storage for shoes or things like this, quite handy. Here in the kitchen, uh, we use uh, bamboo. So this came as laminated sheets, really easy to install. We just needed to cut them and to the size and install them. And we oil them to give them more like a vibrant color. Here we left the three original seats. Um, the reason for that is because under this one, we have our uh, hybrid battery and it's also really handy for uh, storing materials and things like that. Let's get inside. Here we left the front cabin open. Um, the reason for this is because it's really important for us to be able to go in and out really quickly, especially if you're in a city, you want to keep a lower profile. I use it all the time, even if we are in the middle of nowhere. Liam built this little step here to help me uh, hop over a little uh, easier and it doubles up as a uh, storage. Uh, so we have here lots of shoes, uh, spare towels and things like that, quite handy. Give me to slide this in and out. And to go to the front and back, uh, I just need to do this. And that's it. Um, we were a bit concerned about leaving this area open because some people were saying that it was going to be complicated to, uh, uh, to keep the heat at the back. But uh, to be honest, we have these um, really thick insulated curtains that do an amazing job. When it's really hot outside, the heat gets contained here and the opposite in the winter. Um, so to use it, we just need to fasten it here, here, and here. As you can see, give us so much privacy as well. And in during the day, uh, we can just tuck this away um, and keep both the space open. Something that we realize is that in sunny winter days, it, it still warms up quite nicely the front and having to open, so it allow, allows the heat to transfer into the back. Just do it properly. We both really like arches, so Liam built this arch panel here, which allows enough space for us to hop over. And it also has a weight, all of the stories that we have here. We painted this area all black to just give it a little bit of dimension. Let's move into the bathroom. So we placed the bathroom right behind the driver's seat to make the best use of the space. 
As we went for the long wheelbase van, we were sure that we wanted a bathroom. Uh, it's a real luxury to just be able to go, especially in a hurry, or when you do long trips. As a guy, it might be easy for you to just go outside, but for girls, it's a real luxury to have a fixed toilet. We have here a black stainless steel niche and this high pressure shower head that doesn't use much water. Uh, we went for all the fittings in black uh, to match them. This is the Mini Sim Blue toilet. It, it has two compartments. This is for the number uh, one, it's a nine liters bucket. And uh, to use the number two, you just need to lift this hatch here and uh, you just do your things here. It has a back inside, it easily lasts a week and then you just get rid of it in a specific place. We bought this toilet uh, from a family business in the UK and we are really happy with it, how it works. Uh, to secure it in place, we use these banyas here. So in the walls we use vinyl and most people tell us that looks like tiles but yeah, it's just actually a vinyl. It's completely waterproof so it does the job great. It's so lightweight. And on the floor we also use vinyl and it has a bit of a texture here just to make it like less slippery. This is a custom made shower tray. We've um, made from six millimeter plywood with all the gradients built into it. Uh, we use the standard shower waste that you'd use in a house here. Liam has a really good video in our channel where he explains how he did all of this in, in detail. Here's our one and a half meter worktop made from recycled wood. Um, we got it from a company on eBay. Um, we had to treat it before installing it, but we are really happy with how it turned out. Um, this is the sink, it's 450 by 450, it's quite big, uh, but we really like it like this. It makes it really easy to wash your dishes. Um, it's also really nice to be able to put everything away uh, if you don't fancy washing it up and you have to hit the road. We went for open shelves in the kitchen. It was important for us to keep the space feeling open. We didn't want to install covers that would make this space feel narrow. We designed them in different shapes just to give it a bit of variety. Here we place um, things that we use most of the time, like our seeds, tea, oils, and so on. These are uh, our vinyl tiles from the distance. It also looks like a tiles a little bit, but it's a super thin plastic, more like a, uh, a sticker. It looks really good, I think, and it does the job. Let's talk about our second least conventional thing in the van. We don't have a cup, we don't have a mercury or an oven, but we do have a ninja all-in-one cooker. We absolutely love this machine. You can even cook a roast dinner here, all in one go. It's one of the best purchases we ever made. We can fry, we can use, use it as an oven, and we can use it as an air, air fryer. And the best thing about it is that you can cook and close it. So when you're cooking with oil, the oil doesn't splash everywhere. So it keeps it well contained here. Uh, the only thing is it's electric, so you require to have a good setup. Um, um, then we have our coffee machine. Uh, we use this as a kettle as well, so it's quite efficient um, for even for making teas. Uh, here is where we have the bins and all of our cleaning products, bags and so on. Um, in the first row we have all of our calories. It's our really nice cold calorie. <laughs> And uh, this one is for all the toilet toiletries, supplements, and all of those things, quite busy. And here at the bottom, we have uh, the pots, pans, our bowls, and things like that. Here in this one, this one is a little bit smaller because we have the wheel arch at the back and uh, we have all of our glasses and things uh, we protect them with this foam here it doesn't look the prettiest but it does the job and then here we have lots of food running stuff chocolates and this is my favorite draw which is the junk utility draw we have <laughs> all kind of stuff here Um, so on the electrical side of things, we have a bank of switches here. We have a double socket. We went for UK sockets because most of our appliances are UK, although we do spend most of our time in Europe. Um, we have three dimmer switches here. Only one is actually a dimmer. This one is for over the um, 
dining table. This one directly above me, which isn't dimmable. And then we have another one for the bathroom. So we switch our bathroom lights from over here. And this dimmer switch is for the undercabinet lights, as you can see. And here we have our on off switch for our pump. So we almost left the UK without this divider built. It was literally on the last couple of days that we decided to build it. We really wanted to do it, but we wasn't sure if we were going to have time before we left. We found this divider so useful and we strap our Ninja to it with this bungee here um, and anything else that's on the worktop, we can just bungee it in to stop it falling off while we drive. And we also hang our headphones here, we've wrapped some lighting around it, we've put our hats here um, and it also just creates a, a divide in the space between the living area and the kitchen, so it's, it's really nice. I'm really happy that we installed this. One of our favorite features is the ladder because it gives us so much food storage in such a small space. So as you can see, we have so many drawers here. We kept the aisle pretty wide so it's easy to pass by each other. Here we have our full height mirror. Uh, it's acrylic, uh, super lightweight. And this is our wardrobe. We use real rattan here and it was kind of tricky to install because um, and this material can expand or contract with the weather, but it's really lightweight. And uh, we store here pretty much all of our clothes and we use organizers. So we fold our clothes here and we it allow us to have it everything really neat. Uh, it's quite easy to put things in and take things out. We have more storage space here. Um, again, we wanted to keep the uh, the space fill up open, so we decided to just have baskets. And um, so they are really lightweight, and we store here more some more clothes and um, hair dryers, electrics, and things like this. We made these little ropes just to prevent things from uh, sliding while we drive. And we have even more storage down here. I have to say that I take up to 70% of the storage in this one. Um, I just have way too many hobbies or things. So. And we keep everything secure with these little latches, as you can see here. So before we drive, we need to make sure that everything is secure. This is a 130 liters fridge. It has an ice box inside. It's a 240 volts fridge. Um, it's, for us, the reason why we chose this and not a 12 volts one is because it's cheaper, it's a lot bigger, and after running the numbers, um, it's more efficient to run this one and the inverter than running a 12 volts fridge. This is the ice box and we can stock up on food for plenty of days. And um, let's, oh yes, let's talk about a new addition that we recently add, that is the locks in each drawer. So initially we didn't install any lock because we wanted a clean look. And so what we did is install these really strong magnets here. Uh, but uh, that wasn't really enough. Um, so we had some temporary solution, which was using a value to hold the three drawers, but yeah, it was not good enough. <laughs> so we decided to install these locks and uh, we keep them open uh, while we are parked. And then um, when, when we are just about to drive, we just need to take the key from here. We install here a magnet. Uh, on the back of the front drawer and we just need to pass it pass the key out yeah and we went for all leather handles uh, in the kitchen and in the wardrobe here we have our 300 millimeter flooring which is 18 millimeters thick this was actually left over from a project that we've done before and um, so we we were able to repurpose it and use it in the van it provides a really nice solid surface to build the kitchen off and all the walls and the internal divides let me show you this tricky area here. This is a tricky area on all vans because you had this curve here. Um, what I did is create a frame that comes all the way from one side across here and down here. Um, this took quite a lot of time, um, but I'm really glad that I've done it. Um, as well as that, uh, I needed to curve the wall here. So we bought some flexible plywood, a six millimeter ply that's, that's flexible and fixed it here so it follows the curves of the van you, you don't see any of the metal parts of the van 
So actually we use six millimeter ply for all the walls on the van, but also the ceiling area here. It's really easy to follow the curves of the van with six millimeter ply. And if you do a nice job cutting it, it actually looks like a plastered finish. Our final finish for the plywood was this lime wash paint. We used it on all the walls and the kitchen fronts. It gives a really nice textured finish. What we found is that the lime wash paint is very vulnerable and it absorbs anything that uh, lands on top of it. So the water, any watermarks soak straight into it. Um, to, to get over this, we, we used a micro cement renovator product, which has kind of worked, but we found that when we spill coffee or something like that, it does get into the paint. So in the future, we're probably gonna have to repaint some of it and use a better product to protect it. Now that I'm here, I just want to show you the Max Air directly above me. We went for a 350 by 350 Max Air. We went for the smaller Max Air because we have so much on our roof and uh, it was a tight space, so it was a perfect solution for us. Um, also, I created a frame to cover up the plastic surround of the Max Air, which finishes off really nicely. Here is our 8mm plywood ceiling. The, we, we, when we first installed this, we wasn't sure exactly how it was going to turn out um, and it was a bit of trial and error. Uh, but to get to this final finish was a combination of staining and sanding, painting and sanding. Um, but we're really happy with how it turned out. As you can see here, we have white paint in the joins and we have a kind of like a sanded dark varnish finish here. Really happy with it. Above the ceiling, we have 75 millimeters of insulation. So that was 50 millimeters of XPS insulation and 25 millimeters of polystyrene insulation. Um, and we, we, still, we still achieved a really good head height in here. Behind our wall panels in the cavity, we have plastic recycled plastic wool insulation. We wanted to make use of the recesses on the van. So we needed to keep the insulation really thin in these areas. We've done that by using an aerogel and a thin polystyrene insulation. So we still have a lot of space here and we didn't waste anything. Let's move to the living area. And uh, we raised the floor here for quite a bit. Again, we didn't want to have any covers above our heads. So we raised it to gain some storage space. And we also really like how we have both areas in different levels. Um, so this table was actually made by the same company that made the worktop. Um, we also have to treat it, but we really like how they made it. We use a lagoon type leg so we can move the table around anywhere. I really like working here while the, having the, the doors open and the window over there as well. Uh, as, as you can see, I mean, I'm quite short, but uh, we have so much space above our heads, which it helps to uh, don't feel claustrophobic in this area. We wanted a really comfortable bed, and so we used this 150 mil cushion. It's 100 uh, mil foam and 50 mil memory foam. Uh, I made these uh, covers myself, actually. I have no idea about sewing and uh, it was a bit of a crazy idea. It took a very long time, but I'm really happy I did it. We wanted to create things with our own hands and now I feel comfortable about sewing. I mean, I'm not good, but yeah, I feel a bit more comfortable now. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue. So, um, here in this area, we have uh, we have a, a little shelf here uh, with artificial plants. Maybe one day we can change it for real plants. And uh, we have two fans. We haven't tested them in the van yet, but uh, we tried them on at home and they work quite nicely. Uh, we also have some stories here. Uh, Leon did an amazing job building this um, to, to hide all the metal of the van so it looks less like a van. A van. <laughs> and um, they are really handy. We put away all of our uh, curtains and things like that. We also have this other little shelf here, really handy. We have the Wi-Fi here and the projector. We have some LED lights, really creates a nice warm vibe. The storage of this area is divided in three parts. So 
Uh, this one is for all the to store everything that we don't use daily, like food, winter clothes, uh, bottles, this kind of stuff. All of this area here is the garage that we'll show you later. And here, uh, under this one, is where we have the masterpiece of the van. Here we have all of our electrical setup. Uh, we have in total 11,000 watts and uh, that's a lot of power. I'm really happy. This is one of the parts that I'm most proud of because I put a lot of work and research into it to try to have the best system that we could. Uh, bearing in mind that I had no idea about electrics. I didn't even know what an amp was before, but thankfully there is a lot of information online and so I learned a lot. I'm, yes, I'm really happy with this. Um, as I said, these two battery banks are 11,000 watts and on the roof we have two solar panels um, with a total of 850 watts. So one of our requirements, as I said earlier, uh, was to have uh, as much power as we could. And after running numbers, we realized that we couldn't achieve this capacity with a 12 volt system. So we decided to go for a 48 volts. Our van uh, is a mild hybrid, so our alternator charges at 48 volts. And so it kind of made sense for us to just keep it in 48 volts. There is less uh, voltage drop when you use 48 volts, so you can use the smaller cables. And also the, the components that you see here, they are four times the capacity of a 12 volt system, but they are not four times the size. So we fit more power into a smaller space. It's not conventional. Um, I'm aware that you don't see a matching a van and that's why all of this research was kind of complicated, but Thankfully, there is a lot of research out there for boats and somehow it works quite similar. So this is the solar charger regulator. We have a, a few appliances in 12 volts. We have a DC to DC converter to step down the, the volt from 48 to 12. And over here, this best is, our, is the MultiPlus 2 from Victron. This is an inverter and a charger combined into one device. So it converts our uh, 48 volts into 240 volts for our appliances. And it also charges the batteries when we are plugged into a shore power. Over here, we have the DC to DC battery charger made by Christic. It's a really important device for us because it charges the batteries while we drive. And uh, all of these things that you see over here are our fuses. We use the garage solely as a storage area. We have a weights bench. We have the two 36 kilogram dumbbells. We have the paddle board. At the top of the garage here, we have a net which holds various things like a lilo and um, other beach accessories. We have our barbecue. We have a couple of seats for the beach. We have our tools. We installed this handle here to operate the door latch. We found that from here it was very difficult to, to reach down to where the latch was but we attached this handle and now we can open it from, from here. As well as that we have a door pocket here and a door pocket here useful for putting our mobile phones at night. We have two nets, one on each side, where we just put various other things that we need to store in the garage area. The three windows that we installed in the van are double glazed plastic windows. They have integrated um, fly screens and blackout blinds. Let's talk about the plumbing. So on the driver's side, just behind the driver's seat, we have our fresh water tank. It's 70 litres. Um, also, we have two grey tanks. We have one that is 35 litres at the back of the van, just under here. And below the kitchen sink, we had 25 litres grey tank. So we actually have two grey tanks in this van, which is a bit unconventional, but it just worked out the best for us. The reason we ended up with two grey tanks is that it was, um, with our shower being on one side and our sink being on the other side of the van, it was very difficult to plumb both systems into the same tank. So we decided to actually have a tank for the sink and a tank for the shower. Uh, also underneath the van we have a 10 litre electric hot water cylinder which provides us with the hot water for our shower. So all the pipe work underneath the van is very well insulated. We also have a, 
a heater pad attached to our fresh water tank to stop things freezing up in the winter time. Um, we haven't had to test that yet because we've been luckily in warm places so far. Yeah, the lowest temperature we've had is four degrees and nothing's frozen yet. We're gonna go back inside and I'm gonna show you where we house our pump and other plumbing items. So it's this little cupboard here. We have our, our, we have our whale pump, our inline filter, our expansion vessel, and that's about it. As you can see, yeah. <laughs> we just got caught in a rainstorm. Um, but what we're gonna do now is show you how we have the bed set up at night. At night, we take the table out, remove the lagoon leg and put it aside. Underneath this rack here, we have a cupboard for all our bedding. We put the lagoon leg here to store it over the night. We take that piece of wood that we have in this cupboard and we then fix the wood to these two brackets and slide in the table. We move back the back cushions to the middle and that's it. As easy as that. So this is the end result. We have a king size bed. We have 1.9 meters this way, one and a half meters this way, and being six foot, I can lay down. Just like this, nice and comfortable. Just like being at home. <laughs> and one other thing that I'd like to mention is the Fiat sunroof we have. It's an aftermarket sunroof designed for Fiats. Um, it was quite difficult to find, but we, we managed to source one on eBay and we're really happy with it because what we can do is totally remove the glass, which is really useful if you want to get out and enjoy the view or wash the solar panels or just create more, more ventilation. Over here we have our little projector and what we do is we place it here. So we have a shelf here. So this slides into these brackets over here. We put the projector here like this, plug it in, and then over here we hang we hang a white sheet and we can project um, movies or whatever onto here and the, the screen is kind of like this size. Tell you that's the next place to watch. Yeah, okay, when do I leave? Half an hour, hour? With that cast on? An apartment to listen to the automatic laundry and the electric dishwasher and the garbage disposal. We have a high-tech alarm system that's linked in with our external lighting, the infrared LAN cameras that we can access remotely. We have two sirens as well. We have vibration detectors all around the van which triggers the alarm system. We use Zigbee communication and a Raspberry Pi to automate and program the whole setup. This is a fully customizable script we created. I hope you enjoyed the tour and learned a little bit more about us. And uh, if you want to see some videos on how we built the van, there's plenty already on our channel and there will be more to come. Or if you're interested on the van life adventures, make sure you follow along. Oh my God.